Also, I, I mentioned last week, I announced the contracts for the land, that we are under contract for 60 acres of land 10 miles to the west of us here. We are purchasing the land at a value of $1.8 million. So if you are a giver, <laughs> now is time. Amen? I want to encourage everybody to participate in one way or another. We're going to be in the next few weeks rolling out ways that you can participate. Watch this. One of the simple things that I'm doing is that once a week I'm going to fast a lunch. Uh, I eat, son, y'all can tell. I, I, I like food, and so for me to fast a meal is, come on, Jesus. So I'm going to fast once a week. I'm going to skip a meal. I'm going to seek God in prayer, and I'm going to donate the money that I was going to be paying for food to the building fund. Uh, it's, for me, it's about $15 every time that we eat somewhere. So I, I do the math real quick. I'm a math guy. If just a hundred of you guys would join me in that, just skip a meal. Just once a week. That'd be $1,500 a week. That would go so far to make this bit debt go away. And I want you all to pray about that. We'll be rolling out a couple of other things that you can do. This week, Kathy has been preparing the giving statements. And she called me over to the office and she said, you have got to see this. Um, there's a, a young man that comes to our church. Uh, I'm not going to give you his name, but he is five years old. He's five years old and he has a giving statement. And it's, it's that long. Some of y'all are ashamed because you don't. His is that long. Last year, five-year-old young man gave 138 of his own dollars. To the church. Isn't that something? That tells me our future is going to be all right. We've got little ones like that that are believing God with us. Five years old. I, I kept it on my desk all week long and I prayed, God, I don't know how to pray that you bless a five-year-old. Don't give him a new car because he can't drive. I don't know how to bless him, but God bless him somehow so that his faithfulness is rewarded and he, people can see what he's done, what he's doing. God is good. But everybody can participate, right? right. Everybody. If a five-year-old can do that, I, I see that every week. He, is, he gives a little envelope and he signs the envelope. and It's precious to, it's precious to us. So we, we appreciate that. If you have your Bible this morning, let's go to work. Psalms 121 in your Bible. And if you will, please stand for the honor of reading God's Word together. Psalms 121. Those of you that are online, join us in this together. Psalms 121, starting in verse 1, the writer is David. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. You all write in your Bible, you might want to be underlining some things. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. The promise of God hidden right there in plain sight, that if you go out, son, you are coming back in. Right. The devil might want to take you out, but he can't because God's already made a promise that if you go out, you're going to come back in. That word preserve in that verse means that he will hedge you in. He will guard you. He will protect you. You are covered in every situation that you are in. Last week, the focus of the week was on pressure. You might have lived that out. You might be living that out right now. Pressure, what pressure is and what pressure does. We spent the entire time that morning on the one single word pressure. This morning, this week, I want to focus on these words from verses 1 and 2, where David first asks the question. In question form, David says, where does my help come from? But then he answers it. He was able to answer it because he already knew. <laughs> See, that's the goal. That's the goal for us all to come to the place where that little nugget of knowledge is not hypothetical or theoretical, but it is experiential. Amen. You can always tell when you're talking to somebody who has a hypothetical or a theoretical. 
Well, I don't know. I hope so. Well, maybe. It could be. I hope so. I'm just, then you can talk to somebody who has an experience who says, let me tell you why. I know he will. Because he's already done it before. David said, boy, he's, he's got the heart of a warrior. He said, I'm going to be all right because of God. This morning, I want to talk to you about that little phrase, my help comes from. Help comes. No matter what your situation, help comes. Father, give us a word in this moment in due season. Let everything that we hear and say magnify your name. We give you thanks. And they said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. When you talk about trouble and help, one of the fundamentals of understanding that is that the presence of one creates the need for the other. When you talk about trouble and you talk about help, the presence of one creates the need for the other. The reason you need help is because you have trouble. If there were no trouble, there would be no need. This seems simple and fundamental, but hang with me here. If there were no, if there were no trouble, there would be no need of help. But since there is trouble, there is a, a need for something there. The point being made here is that my help is secure. There is, as he said, help for me in my times of trouble. Knowing the word as we do, Psalms 121. It has been called a soldier's song, which means that it could have been written at a time when David was either engaged in a conflict of some kind or he was reflecting on a conflict that he had already been through in his life because he was, as we know, a warrior. And as you read it, you can see how everything that he says applies in that being a soldier's song. David said, he is your help. He is watching over you. He will keep you. And he is watching over you. All things that you need when you're a soldier. Psalms 121 has also been called a traveler's song. Because it could have been written at a time when David was on one of his many adventures, one of his many travels. As, as we know, there was trouble happening. And, and wherever David went, he needed the help of God. There always seemed to be some kind of trouble. And he always needed the help of God in his travels. Well, what we do know about Psalms 121, and, and some of you that are Bible students that dig in a little deeper will know this with me, that Psalms 121 is the second of 15 psalms that are grouped in a little cluster together from Psalms 120 to 134, and they are called Songs of Ascent. As you read your Bible there, you may see that right there in the caption above the Psalms 121, psalm, a song of ascent. It's a group. It goes for 15 different chapters. And they are, are magnificent when you read them. Psalm 122 is where we find David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. In Psalms 123, David said, unto you I lift up my eyes. In Psalms 124, David said, if it had not been that the Lord was on our side. Psalms 125 says, those who trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. These clustered together are songs that were sung by people as they were traveling from wherever they were to go to the city of Jerusalem to participate in the feasts that they participated in throughout the year. As they traveled, they sang these songs. They sang them because it was often a very perilous journey. Because back then they knew people that were traveling usually had money with them because they had enough money to hold on to them to get them to where they were going and to come all the way back. And so thieves and robbers were there. It was a perilous, it was a perilous journey. And so the speculation is that as David was making the trip, he saw the hills and the mountains and along the way, and it reminded him of Mount Zion, the mountain of God. And that caused him to say this, that no matter what the trouble is, no matter what the challenge is, David said, I will always be able to lift up my eyes and look to the hills and know this, that my help will always come from the Lord. My help doesn't come from that hill. My help comes from the God that made that hill, Amen. the Lord himself. And, and it's important to know the name also that he used there when he said, my help comes from the Lord. The name that he used for Lord is one that we are familiar with. He used the word Jehovah. Jehovah, which is the most common name given for God in all of the Scripture. 
It is a name that defines who he is. And beyond that, listen very carefully because this is important to the foundation of this sermon. It explains how it is that he is eminently qualified to be our help no matter what the trouble is that comes our way. The name Jehovah. Ah, He is Jehovah. Defined as the self-existent and the eternal one who inhabits eternity. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and He is the last. He has no beginning and He has no ending. He always has been and He always will be. He is the Almighty and the everlasting God. There is nothing that He cannot do and there is no place where He is not. That is what you say when you are saying the Lord God Jehovah. You're saying all of of that, and as powerful as that is, and it is, (laughs) is the recognition that that is just the beginning of Revelation. Because you cannot use the name Jehovah without considering also, as you know, that there are many, many other biblical names that are attached to that, that tell us who he is and what he does, and once again tells us, "Mm, I'm preaching myself happy, and y'all are looking at me like... I already know where I'm going, and I'm I'm 10 minutes into this, and I'm extremely happy right now. (laughs) That tell us why he is eminently qualified to be our help, no matter what the trouble is. The scripture says he is defined as Jehovah Nisi, which means he is the Lord who fights all of our battles. When you find yourself in a fight, You don't have to fight that battle yourself. You call on the name of Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who will fight for me. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who supplies all of my needs. He is Jehovah Rapha. In any time of sickness, he is the one who will heal me of my infirmity. He is the one I call on in times of sickness. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord, our peace, so that when my mind is going crazy and I can't stop to think and I can't get a handle on everything, he is the one who brings peace flooding back into my life. He is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He's not just the Lord of, mm, mm, mm. (laughs) I'm already excited. He's just not the Lord of a few. He is the Lord of all. He is the Lord of hosts. He is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is near to us. So that no matter where I am, he is always near unto me. He is Jehovah Ra, the Lord, our shepherd, which is the exact title that David gave him in Psalms 23, when in totality, David expressed this very thought that, yes, he is my help. He is my everything. He is all I will ever need. When David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And what you see as you walk your way through these verses in Psalms 121, what David was saying is, your God, Jehovah, is with you in every struggle that you will face. If there is a mountain in your way, He is the one who made that mountain. He is the one who can move that mountain. He can move it if your body is sick or is broken. And sometimes in an assembly like this, we have people who come in. Their body is sick. Their body is broken. Listen to me. He is the one, the only one who can make your body whole again. He can heal you. He can put you back together again. If there is a fight that you are facing Anywhere in the realm of your life, he is the God who will fight your battles for you. If there is a need that you have in your life, anybody in here have a need in your life right now? He is the God who will meet your need. If there is evil in your environment, you are the one who can boldly say, I will fear no evil for you are always with me. All you folks who are so afraid of devils, you need to get a revelation. There's, ah, there's too many believers walking around scared of devils. There's devils everywhere. Their devils are trembling because of the God that is in you, the God that is with you, the God that is for you. 
are troubling you. They're troubling you, and you're letting them trouble you. Man, you need to walk into your house tonight and say, devil, every devil in hell, get out of my house. And watch what happens. I'm going to preach before I get out of here. That was my warm-up. I'm getting there. If there is trouble near you, he will always be with you. I'm going to preach this before I leave here today. Last Sunday, we talked about the pressure that came flooding into the life of David there in 1 Samuel chapter 30. When under that pressure, David's men immediately thought of killing him. They considered killing him. And in this psalm, Psalm 121, David is now much older. Watch me. Age is a beautiful thing. Where are my old people at? Could y'all hear me when I said that? Because y'all are like, what? I don't like getting old, but it's a beautiful thing. Because the older, <laughs> the older you are, the more you know. David is now older, and he reflects on that. He reflects on that. And every other thing that he's been through. Ah, and as he sings these songs of ascent while he's on his way to worship Jehovah God, he's on his way to celebrate Jehovah God. David said, I want to just make this clear. My help comes from, out of, and because of the Lord. My help comes out of, from, and because of the Lord. Now, let's put some shoes on this. Everybody has a worse time or times in your life. If I were to walk through here this morning and put my hand on any shoulder, any shoulder in this room could immediately reflect to me a moment or moments that are burned inside of you, that you called your worst moment. This is the worst moment moment. This is the worst thing that has ever, that was the worst time. The worst time of your life is not when stuff happens. Right. Come on. Sometimes we reflect on a day or a season of our life where everything seems to be at its worst and we say, that was the worst time of my life. I want to break, forever break that false reality over your life. The worst time of your life, listen, don't get offended, but hear me out. The worst time of your life is not when you got cancer. You might want to say that. Well, that was, that was the worst day of my life when the doctor walked in and, and told me that. The worst day of my life was when they told me that my dad had leukemia and he was not going to live. The worst time of your life was not when your business failed. How dare you, Pastor? It was the worst time of my life. No, it wasn't. The worst time of your life was not when your loved one died. Not when you fell back into the life that you said you were not going to go back into. Not when your loved one died. Not when your addiction came back. Not when they evicted you from your home. And not when they repossessed your car. You're still hanging on to that lie saying that was the worst day of my life. That was not the worst day of your life. The worst day of your life was not when scandal dragged your name through the mud. And you walking through the aisles at Walmart ducking people because your name was in the paper and they know who you are and you're ashamed by what happened. The worst day of your life is not when trouble showed up. The worst day of it all was not when it happened. The worst day is when you let all of that stuff cause you to start believing that there was no help left for you in God and no help left for you in your future. That was the worst day of your life. The worst day of your life was when you stopped believing that God is your help in your troubles. See, because just as surely as trouble comes, help comes. Can I say it like we say it in the South? Just as sure as hell comes, help comes. As surely as the sun is going to rise in that eastern sky tomorrow morning, help is coming from my God into my life tomorrow just the same. Jeremiah said, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new, say it with me, every morning. Help comes. And I just need somebody. I don't know who's going to help me out in here this morning. Somebody who can testify and tell me that when it does, there is no better feeling than to know that right there in that moment, your God stepped in and changed it all for you. Come on.
I tell you, there's no better feeling than knowing that in that moment, the plan that hell had for you dropped to the ground. Demons stepped back because God stepped in. Laying in a hospital bed at four o'clock in the morning. In the worst pain of my life. I never felt pain like I felt that morning. Blood pressure, 240 over 140. Doctors standing there telling me, if this doesn't stop, you're going to have a stroke. And if you don't have a stroke, your kidney and your liver and all of your internal organs are going to fail because your body can't stand up under this kind of blood pressure. Every doctor, I had five of them, tried and failed to fix the problem. I want to testify. Amen. Tried and failed to fix the problem that could only be done by a specialist Amen. who was not available to me. They told me he's not here. He's not in town. We don't know if he's going to be in town tomorrow. It could be as much as a week later before this specialist gets in town to help you with this problem. At four o'clock in the morning, that very doctor walked into my room and he said, I don't know what happened. This never happens. I just had a cancellation. They're going to prep you for surgery. And in one hour, I'll have the problem fixed. <laughs> and he did in less than an hour. Somebody said, oh, how lucky. Bite your tongue off. It was not love. It was the hand of God giving me favor in that moment. He brought me through it. My help comes. My help comes from the Lord. Everybody, every one of us needs to know this. You need to know it right now. Because this is for many people an incredibly stressful time. Y'all are wearing it well. You look cute. <laughs> You're wearing it pretty good. But if somebody got behind your eyelids, they'd cry their eyes out because of what you are walking through right now. Family issues. Nothing worse. When you love your family, there's nothing worse than a family torn apart. Financial problems. Pastor, you don't even know. I talked to a man last week who was in the twilight of his life, who was as broke as he's ever been in his life. He's scared because he's, he's older than I am, and he has nothing. He has financial problems backing up, health issues. In a room like this, there are people that have got health issues that no one knows about, business failures, business issues that are going on. We live in a time when nations are rising against nations. I'm telling y'all, I don't know if they're going to drag us into World War III or not. As bad as it feels when it's happening, hear me one more time, that's not the worst of it. No, it's not. The worst of it is when you let go of hope and you start believing that there is no help. Now let me get some, some exegesis in here this morning so I'll make J.D. happy. David said, I gotta, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. David said, my help. Somebody say my. my. What does that do? That changes the complexion of the statement. Yeah. David said, my help, which makes it personal. The usage of the word my expresses a connection that goes beyond just a little bit of knowledge. No, it goes deeper than that. It is a connection that I have. A much better word is a word covenant. Ah, new school believers, y'all might not even know this, but you have a covenant with God. A covenant, a covenant is an agreement that has been made that cannot be broken. Today, we live under the new covenant that was established, as the word says, on better promises. And in that covenant, God has made us his promises that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never fail you. I am the God that heals you. I am the God that will provide for you and supply to you. Those are his promises. Made in that covenant, David said, he is my God. He is my help. Verse 5, he said, the Lord is your keeper. Verse 8, he said, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. I told you earlier, so shout now. That means that if you go out, he's going to let you come back in. Y'all ain't saying nothing. From this time forth, 
and forevermore. You know what that means? That means this is settled. Amen. Write it in the margin of your Bible. This is settled. This is established. This is forever. This is forever the Word of God. Psalm 46, which you cannot preach something like this and not reference, even just one time. The Word of God says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present in time of trouble. God is our refuge. You know what the word refuge means? Shelter. You know what a shelter is? A hidden place of protection. But hang with me here. That's not the best part of it. A shelter isn't the same as a dwelling. Where are you at? I'm preaching so good, he's even like... A shelter is not the same as a dwelling. A shelter is a temporary place. So when you, when, when you say God is our refuge, you're saying God is our shelter. I might be in that place in this moment, but I'm not going to be there long. See, I'm only in that, that place of shelter for just a little bit of time. Sometimes I've got enough fight in me to handle whatever life or hell or devils throw at me. Anybody can say amen? Sometimes I've got enough left in me that when hell comes at me, I can just dish it right back into it. But sometimes all I have in me is just enough strength left in my bones to get me to a temporary place where I can recover until I get enough strength to fight back. Until I can rest in the presence of the Lord and get my strength back. And that is where some of us are. I'm going to say this and I'm going to just move on. Some of you are there right now. And you're thinking there's something wrong with you. No, there's nothing wrong with you. Where you are right now is in the shelter of his hand. You are in that temporary place. God wants you to rest. It's not time for you to fight. It's time for you to rest. Time for fighting is going to come in a little bit. So if you don't have enough strength to fight right now, you just rest. I, I know it's a good word. I'm preaching it. God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present, say it with me, help. That word help. He will come forth. He will appear. <laughs> he will meet you. Yeah. And in that moment, he will always be ready. Yeah. Son, yeah. shut up. I love that. I love that. I love the Bible so much. God is our very present help. Means that in that moment when I need him to be my help, he will come forth. He will appear. He will meet you. And in that moment, he's going to be ready. You can say to the devil, you're going to learn today. Yeah. You're going to learn today. Because I got somebody who's here. I'm saying it again because someone needs to hear it. The worst day of your life is not when whatever it was that happened, happened. The worst day is when you stop believing that help is on the way. Yeah. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. <laughs> I could hear Tammy Faye Baker singing that. He'll do it again. Some of y'all don't even know who Tammy Bay Baker is. <laughs> You're freaking out about money. You're freaking out about money. He can send a fish with money in its mouth. He's done it before. He can do it again. God has already said the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Why are you worried about that, Philip? Why are you... No, did that come out of my mouth? Why are you worrying about it? He can send manna from the sky. He can send water from a rock. He is the God who makes fire that doesn't burn and lions that cannot bite. That was a better line than y'all gave it credit for. Let's bring that up on the family room Wednesday night. He, God can confuse your enemies and have them destroy one another. See, you've got problems with enemies and you're wondering, what do I need to do about it? What do I need to say? How do I need to bring this up? What do I need to talk about? How do I need to let them know? You don't. You just kick it neutral and pray, okay, God, fight this thing. Jehovah needs to fight your battle. The next thing you know, they're all fighting one another and you're like, I didn't have to do that. God did it. In Psalms 54, David said, God is my helper. That phrase, God surrounds me. The one who surrounds me and the one who protects me. 
Sometimes you look around and you think you are surrounded. <laughs> you are. Always. Always. You are always, don't they say nothing. You are always surrounded. You're surrounded by the angels of God who have your back in every situation. You are surrounded. You are surrounded by God's protection. He has hedged you in. This sermon would not be complete if I didn't finish it by saying that that help is not just with you. It is in you. I waited all day to get here. I waited all day to get to that line. When I'm in trouble, God doesn't need to show up as if he were somewhere else and has to figure it out and get to where I am to, to be there because he's never somewhere else. God is never somewhere else. All he really needs to do is show out. Why? Because he's already, he's already in me. Did y'all forget Bible 101? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells inside of you. So God doesn't have to show up. All he has to do is show out. In your troubles, let your confessions be strong, rooted in covenant, and built on everything that God has already done for you before. First, Second Corinthians chapter 1. If you have that on the screens, Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Paul is relating his testimony and he says, My friends, I want you to know what a hard time we had in Asia. Our sufferings were so horrible and so unbearable that death seemed certain. In fact, we felt sure that we were going to die, but this made us stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting God who raises the dead to life. God saved us from the threat of death, and we are sure that he will do it again and again. All you need to do sometimes is say, do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. I know what you've done for me. I know what you are. I know how powerful you are. I know what you've done for me before. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. I want you, if you will, this morning to bow your heads and open your hearts for this, this just to sink in and settle in. I know what I know. I know that trouble is an ever-present reality. Just as surely as we say God is a very present help, we can also say that trouble is very present. Sometimes it just seems that trouble is overwhelming. The enemy has a way of coming in like a flood. Shock it all. Bring it all. Throw it at one time. A little at a time, I might be able to bear it, but all of it at one time, I, I may or may not. But then if it just keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. I'm having trouble at work. Can't understand why it keeps coming. And then I go home and I'm starting to have some trouble at home. My family is divided and splintered and can't get along. And it feels like there's distance there. Then we come down to the end of the month and we start running down our bills and we start trying to write checks and pastor's saying we're going to buy land and everybody needs to, to give and I'm as broke as a joke and it ain't funny and I don't know what to do now. Let me say this to you. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. I'm counting on it today that there are people in here who are in trouble. I hope you are. <laughs> I'm counting on it today that there are people in here that think this is the most ironic morning that you've had in a while. That here I am neck deep in this thing and this is the word that God chose to bless us with today. He is your help in your time of trouble. So if this morning when I give an invitation for prayer, if you're fighting battles, your march needs to be Jehovah Nissi, the Lord who fights our battles. If you're in sickness, He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. If you have no peace in your life, He is 
Jehovah, Shalom, the Lord who is our peace. If you have needs that are stacking up and packing up, He is Jehovah Jireh. It feels like in your life, things and people have left you, and sometimes it feels like you're isolated and alone and all by yourself. He is Jehovah Ra. He is the Lord, your shepherd. You are not alone. You are not alone. The devil is a liar. So, Father, as we pray this morning, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done in these next few minutes. Those, I just feel like somebody just needs to hear this. The worst time of your life is not when the thing happened. The worst time was when you gave up hope and you stopped believing that help is on its way. I declare to you this morning that the help of God is here. If you're sick, we can lay hands on you and pray the prayer of faith and believe God to heal you. If you need Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning, that's the most important work that we're doing in here today. You need to invite Him to come into your life, save you, forgive you of your sins, and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you are without Jesus in this room right now and your life is hard, it's because it's, that's the way it's meant to be. He can change your life. He can change your future. We want to pray with you. Father, today, let your will let your will be found in this room. Father, all that we are going through right now is not for nothing. Let us once again put our hand on this God that what the enemy meant for evil, you mean for good. Somebody is about to experience a turnaround in your moment. God is about to restore your hope. God is going to do that work in you this morning. God is going to restore the hope that you've lost. You don't believe it can happen. God's going to do it. He can do it. He's going to do it. Father, today, have your way. Have your way. Thank you. Worthy you were. Worthy you are. Worthy you will be. Forever. Yahweh. Jehovah, have your way. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, God is in the midst of her and that right well. Father, show. come on believers, pray with me. Show yourself strong in this place. Show yourself strong in someone's life who right this time, right this day needs you to be strong. In a moment, I'm going to give an invitation for prayer. Every person experiencing trouble Find a place, find a way to come to the altar this morning and let us lay hands on you and pray that God would show himself strong on your behalf. Your addiction is back. Don't be ashamed of it. Your addiction is back. God will show himself strong as your deliverer. He is able. He is more than able. So you find a way, you find a place and pray and believe God that's going to do that for you this morning. And if it's not you, you have a family that's gone in a thousand different directions. You want God to do work in their life, your children, your sons, your daughters, your mother, your father. Find a place to pray and let's believe God to turn their life in new ways. I'm praying that there are people in this room in trouble. And this morning, you're going to hand that trouble to God casting that care on him laying aside that weight trusting him to do a miracle somebody who let me just say that somebody who wants or needs a miracle this morning we are that church we are that church we believe all things are possible with God if we could stand all across the building this morning if you guys will come on out and let's just worship together prayer warriors y'all pray, need to be praying right now Y'all feel that? I just feel that. Hell is squealing. Hell is squealing.
squealing, man. Just, no, nah, don't just, just stay where you are. Just stay like you are. Don't do that. Just, just, no. There is help. There is hope. God is able. We are not going to walk out of this room until he meets you there and meets you where you are. God is able. In the mighty name of Jesus. All to workers, if y'all will, come. Anybody who has a need for prayer, come on and let's worship together. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.